chess opening for you and see what happens. Knight f3. Why do I keep getting white? Okay. Okay, he's kind of playing a passive approach, but that's all right. I'm just going to stay in the theory just so that I can hopefully give some instruction on what to do. White basically follows through a set plan. Okay, I'm not too worried if he kicks my knight. Well, he's aggressive. Okay, well, like I say, I'm not too worried if he kicks my knight. I'll let him. Now I'll play d3. Okay, so now objectively we want to get e4 in, and the way to get that in is to prepare for it with knight d2. Not sure I want to play it right away. I don't want to increase the scope of his bishop. Um, now look, his bishop's a target. Knight g5. Hello. Normally I don't like to move a piece twice in the opening, but he gave me that little opportunity, so I'm going to oblige him. Okay, now he could play h3. That's fine. All right. I'm just going to slide on back to h3. Now I'm preparing f4. Try to open him up. So he's a little bit away from castling here because he's moved his bishop back. What's he trying to do? He's trying to play g4. Well, let him. I'm just going to I'm just going to strike in the center, make this very tactical. Now he can push g4 if he wants, if he really, really wants to. And like I say, I'm happy here. I've got a little hole on e4 coming up. Thank you. Now he's got all kinds of hanging things here. So I'll take back with this knight. Now I'm keeping the other knight on g4. So he's you may have to spend it. No, you didn't see it. G4 is hanging. Okay, and we want to take it because we want to try to give a check somewhere if we can, if we can get away with anything. So let's just do it now. Knight takes G4. Okay. So he's kind of giving me a pawn. Ooh. Now Bishop G6 is a threat. Plus, I'm threatening to win a pawn on e5. If he takes on f4, that just develops more of my pieces, and that's exactly what he did. So here's what I'll do is I'll stop and check. Check. Let's just uh, make him commit to something. Okay. Now he got his king displaced, so it's a target. It's not going anywhere. Uh... The queen could check on g4. He gets away with on c7, so I'm not too worried about trying to checkmate him now. Here I'm a clear pawn ahead. His king's caught in the center, and I have uh, a pawn ahead and free development. So he's in a little bit of hot water here. All he can try to do is get his king somehow to safety and get his back rank developed. He's got most of his armies on the back rank. Okay, so now how to take advantage of this. Uh, simplest way is just to continue with my development. I'm going to put some pressure on e7 so that his king can't easily flee. Okay, queen e2. So at some point he's going to have to spend some time figuring out how to hold on to e7 because I'm planning to put a rook on e1, the a rook, and then check him away and win a piece. That's my plan. So where's he going to go? Got a little time advantage, about 15 seconds. Okay. That seems to be a little weak. Okay. He's cut off a potential flight square for his king. So I'll just do what I said I would do. Okay, now he's walking into a pin. Okay, so now I'm threatening to win that piece. How's he going to save it? I don't see how he saves it. He can't guard it again. 
I've got three pieces attacking it, and he's got two defending it, and one is his king. So I believe I'm winning that piece on e6. Development rules. If you get all your pieces out, things can happen. Okay, so clearly he realizes he's going to have to lose the piece. He decides to get the king out of the way. But now I've followed through with my other plan, and his bishop on e7 is loose. He's got to deal with that. Okay, let's see. This just seems to scream of a tactic to play. Uh, if I take the bishop off, I can check on f7 with the queen, and if he interposes his queen, I can stick a rook on e7. I can't do that unless the bishops are gone. I'd like to play something with a theme of bishop takes d6 check, but I don't really see a great follow-up. So I'll just trade bishops and park a rook on f7. Now he's got some serious trouble. Okay, rook f7 check. check. Where are you going to go? Oh, he's going to come out. Well, that's fine. Uh, I'll just check with the queen. Check. Now let's see. If I have a rook on a4, it's mate, So, but he plays b4. So I can check with the queen. He goes back to b6. And then I can... Yeah, let's do it. Queen a4 check. Check. <coughs> okay. Ideally, I'd like to get the queen to b4. I mean, to a5. But it, uh, he might have time to defend a few things. Check. So I'll just check on b4. Now I'll play I'll play rook e4 and let him find a plan. Probably has to play b5 here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, just start opening him up here. Open up the position a4. I gotta watch my time. I'm running out of time. That's his only hope. Okay, let's see. But he's defending this seriously. Okay, so let's just uh let's just take here. And that's his defense. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna put my queen back on a four and I'm threatening queen a six, which is mate. And he sees that, but I have an empassant capture. If I want it, let's just say we don't want it. Park this rook down here. Now that threatens mate and one. I get my knight in play. He runs into more trouble. Now the threat is knight d5 mate. And he didn't see it. So, hello. Game over. Checkmate. Thanks for the game. Challenge. i play again. Okay, we'll add it. Add another game here. Okay, now I get my Nimzovich defense. How is he going to play it? Okay, good. d5. e5 is a playable move. I prefer d5. And there's three main lines. He's just played one of them. Now all I like to do is undermine with f6 here as quickly as I possibly can, but that move drops a pawn. A little silly book trap that he walked into. I can't help that. But he's just given me a free pawn. Okay. So now we just uh, continue with development. And f5 is a critical square that black occupies in this type of Nimzovich, often with a bishop. Sometimes it's later replaced with a knight. In this case, I've got a knight there already. Uh, I'm up, up a pawn. Uh, I've got a nice diagonal for my bishop. Um, that'll stop him from castling. This will force him usually to play c3 and get a knight into d4, but I have all kinds of resources against that. So for the moment, he can't castle uh, kingside. So... I'm not afraid of moves like g4 because I just get knight h4 in. Okay, here he is following the, the plan I suggested, but I'll just continue to develop. Let's see. Now, if, if I play this knight to e7, he can, if he tries g4, I've lost the knight h4 motive, but I have uh, uh, all kinds of reasonable ideas against that, so I'm not too worried there. And he did. Okay. Not too worried about that move. Okay. So now we're going to 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to just put the knight in on e3. Do we, can we get away with that? Yes, queen a4 check. And just put it on e3. Okay, how are you going to handle that? You might have to take it. Now I just win his... Well, actually, I don't. Okay, got a little trick here. Let's see. Maybe I've blundered this, but that's okay. I'll work out of it. I get a couple pawns here and some activities. He's threatening queen b5 check, and he's threatening my knight. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to be giving up two pieces, a uh, piece for two pawns here, it seems, but I've got some active play on his king. Uh, g3, bishop take, 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 take. Okay, let's just take it. Now let him find queen b5 check on his own. He didn't find it. He just gave me a rook. Wow. Game over. <laughs> okay. Does he want to play again? Okay, except again. I'll play him another time. Okay, let's try it again. Knight f3, d6, g3, g6. Okay, I'm just going to go through the routine here and try and set up the kind of position that you want to play. But my opponent certainly cooperated with, with me last time and gave me just about everything I wanted. Okay, so now we're going to go back in the same strategy and get uh, e4 in, but we're going to play a little differently now. We're going to go ahead and develop the queen. Now I'm, I could kick that bishop again. I'm tempted to. Uh, but you know what? Let's see. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just... No, we can't do it. Queen's on that. Okay. Fine. He gets to keep his bishop on that square. But he's not going to stop me from playing e e4 next move. And this is what I want to do. Okay. So now I got what I wanted. Okay. So I've kind of gone through the basic setup of the chess opening for you. The only thing different is I don't have knight c4 in yet. Not sure I want to play that, but I guess it shouldn't be too bad. It does threaten to uh, take on d6. Of course, if he exchanges on e4 and I take it back with the pawn, I don't have knight c4 because nothing's guarding it on c4. I'm a, uh, wow. So, just waiting for him to move. I still have to develop my queen bishop and queen rook. He still has to get castled. He didn't get castled last game, although he's certainly going to be able to make it this time. But why is he taking his time? Why is he taking his time? I don't know. I've done nothing out of the ordinary with white here. Uh, I've got my knights developed. One bishop fianchettoed. Uh, the king is castled. I've got a solid pawn center. Uh, black has got at least, or white has got at least equality here. So you didn't, I didn't run in, into any prepared analysis, any prepared uh, trap, uh, something that he's extremely familiar with. He's just fending for himself. So the chess opening for you might just be the chess opening for you to get some practice with. So I'm happy to play it, but I'm waiting for him to move. I hope he didn't forfeit or disconnect. Uh, his name is Quick Find a Plan. Well, Quick Find a Move. <laughs> uh, just trying to help you out, my friend. So let's see. He should play Knight F6 here and put some pressure on E4. Because then if I play knight c4, he can rip it with his bishop and then gobble on e4 with his knight. So knight f6 stops me from uh, playing uh, knight c4. But I could play knight g5 again. Then when his bishop drop backs, so then I can exchange on f5. Well, he didn't do it. Okay. He put the bishop on f6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the knight on c4, inviting him to take it. And then I... I uh, get some pressure on the backward pawn on the open file. Uh, okay, knight c4. This clears a line for my bishop to develop. It also, uh, in some cases, plans to bring the knight back to e3. Okay, 
Okay, so now he's guarded e7. That's fine. Let's put the knight... Well, let's see. He might take on... He might push f4. Let's just develop the bishop. Get the pieces out. Good things happen when the pieces come out. But before I do that, I'm going to anchor that knight in on a on c4 because this is one of the themes to keep the knight in on c4 and this is what I want to illustrate okay now we're going to develop the bishop okay bishop e3 now that bishop is developed f4 is a major threat of his um, now the next step is to get my rooks and play a little bit got to figure out where I want them just waiting things out. It's unfortunate he's spending time on a simple position. He could just develop, and right now he, uh, he can't really develop his uh, king side completely. His queen is tied down to guarding d6. He could castle long, I suppose, but then I've got theoretically a tailor made attack on the queen side. I can start uh, trying to open up uh, lines by advancing pawns, and he w could be walking right into an attack. So White's got all his pieces out. Uh, except for the queen rook isn't developed, but it's kind of developed if we uh, if we use the a file. Okay, what did he do? G5. Now I'm not too worried about that. He, obviously, he wants to play f4, uh, but I can just deal with that rather nicely. I can take away that whole option of his by just taking on that square on f5. Now uh, he no longer has the f4 push. Uh, he has a g4 push. Am I too worried about that at the moment? Mm. Not really. What I'll do is I'll counterattack c6 with by moving my knight. Now he can get eight d5 in. And what do I do? Uh, well, let's see. What do I do? I've got some time here. Let's use it. Okay. How about if I play d4 here? No, I can't play d4. My queen hangs. Okay. If I play a5, he plays b5. I'd like to be able to do something here. His only real threat is g4, and that doesn't really help him any because it just drives my uh, knight to where to d2, where it'll want to go to e4. Um, so since he's going to be playing d5 at some point, let's put a little pressure on e5. I'll just play rook e1 here, see what he does. Okay, so. Now he wants to attack on the king side. Well, why not? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack on the king side. Now, if he plays g5, now I have knight g5. I got three pieces attacking on g5, so he's got to deal with it, and he didn't deal with it. Okay, he's going to gambit some stuff here, so. Let's just threaten to trade some pieces off. There you go. Now the, playing the rook to e1 was a nice useful move. Now which way to take? Uh, I'll take with the f pawn just to give myself a little flight, flight square and to secure h2 if need be make, because my queen guards it, it indirectly. Okay, now he's played that move, so I can win on e5. I can just take it now because his bishop on on uh, f6 is pinned, and if he takes, I take back with the queen. Yeah, I'll just take it. Okay, knight takes e5. Okay, so now is I've got him lined up, this king and queen lined up. Now here I have to take with the queen, but that's fine. I'll trade queens here. Uh, he can't afford to. Whoops! He can't afford to trade queens here. What can he do? Well, he had to trade queens. Now, do I have any cute knight checks? Nah. Well, the discovery is still there. He's got to be careful. So now I have one two pawns. I have a minute and eighteen. He has thirty-two seconds. What's he gonna do? He's going to castle and walk right into a fork. That's a shame. Okay. Well, sorry. Knight f7. Now he should move his knight so he can take... Well, I don't know. 
<laughs> Burnett on G8 it's never developed. And he developed it. Okay, so I'll just take the one on D8. Now if he takes with the king, I have another fork. So let's see, how can we take advantage of all this? I think the simplest thing to do is just uh, take squares away from him. Well, I gave him E4, but I'm not too worried about that. I want to keep him out of E5. I want to own and own that. Okay, that's fine. I'm happy to liquidate. So now here, I guess I get another pawn. And I'll go down and take the seventh rank. A7 is loose. Okay, now I'll bring this rook over so that I can get it. my rooks doubled on the seventh rank. I think he's out of time. Game over. Challenge. Okay. He wants to play again. Okay, one more. Alright, what are you going to do? E4. Let's see if he got his Nimzovich defense preparation a little better. He realized he dropped a pawn last time. So hopefully he will improve on that, and I can show a little bit more of the theory. Okay, he played bishop d3 last time. Hey, did it again. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, don't know what to say. C3 is knight f3, knight e2. Those are all moves. Uh, can't show you much about those because he didn't play them, but I will another time. Okay, so... How, how do I have a 1905 rating playing 1300s? Ouch, you can't do that, my friend. Okay, what are you doing? What's his threat? I don't know what his threat is, because I can just take and fork and win a, win a piece. I, win a, I mean, win a rook and make him take several moves to capture my knight. What are you going to do? Ouch. Ooh. Check. Sorry. Uh, okay, so... Now I'm a rook up, and, and he has to spend some time to get rid of my queen. Okay, he's threatening mate. Well, I can deal with that. I don't mind that if he checks me. I can castle by hand here. So he'll take, and Check. I'll move my king to, to, to g7, where it's nice and safe. Check. I'm ready to move there. Okay, now I'll develop a piece. He wants to check. Well, let him. Okay. You're not going to get anywhere, pal. I'm not going to let you. Okay, so now we just play safe and secure. Okay, let's see. I'll play queen queen d6 here. The idea queen d well queen d6 he has bishop f4. I want to play e5. I want to get e5 in, but I'm not ready for it. So I'll just develop my bishop. not worried about the knight a1. You just have to capture it on his own time. Something has to waste its time getting over there. His king marches over and takes it. That takes several moves for him to do it. Or move his king up and then take it with a rook. That costs him some time. Okay, he so he's got a little mild pressure on, on uh, g6. I don't mind if he goes into e6 so much because he really doesn't have a follow-up. Uh, if I play g5, knight e6, queen d6, he can't play bishop f4. Uh, he can try and undermine my pawns with h4, but then I have g4. But he's not really threatening anything I should worry about, is he? I don't see it. If I play queen d6, he plays knight e6, then he's threatening to play bishop f4. Let's see, so... How do we want to do this? How about if I just play... If I just play queen d7, that's a nice safe move. Okay, the idea is to play queen g4 and trade queens on him. So he needs to play knight e6. Now I'm not too worried about the knight sitting there on e6. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of great follow-ups with it. So what I'm going to do is
He get to my king to a better square, so I'm just going to back him up and get him to uh, h7. If he wants to stop and take on g7, that's fine. I'll just get my king to to uh, h7. He's a little better off over there. This frees my knight, gets it unpinned. Now I got to watch my time. I spent a lot of time here. I'm going to have to make mo moves a little quicker with less thinking. Okay, so. There is some danger here for me, but in the long run I should be okay. Uh, if I, he's, I'm up at exchange once he finally wins my knight on a1. If he doesn't win it, I'll keep it. But I'll just carefully consolidate my position. Okay, so now my knight is free to move. I could move it to uh, e1, I'm sorry, e8 to d6, and then uh, f5. I'd like to play knight e4, but just kind of, it, it, it could work out. Knight e4 threatens a combination. If he takes with the pawn, I take with take his knight off. Yeah, knight e4 is my idea. I knew that's why I was playing uh, king g8. So knight e4 kind of gives him a few problems. Because it, okay, so let's just go ahead and do it. It's not a movie you saw coming. Knight e4, he could play knight c5. No, he can't play knight c5. He could play knight takes bishop, but then I play knight takes knight check. So I'll just do it and see what he thinks. If he plays pawn takes, I play queen takes. Like I say, we want him to uh, start spending some clock time here. Get him in a time and disadvantage. Like I say, knight takes bishop, I play knight takes knight check. If he plays... Uh, Pawn takes knight. I can play pawn takes pawn check. I think he drops his queen. And then he doesn't have an easy easy time of this here. Okay, he took there, so I will take here. Check. Put him in check. Okay, now I take with the king. Now he's going to play bishop b2, and I'm not too worried about that move. He didn't play it. Okay, well that's alright. He wants to check there, but I'll just pin him. Pin his bishop. Check. And then I'll slide the king over. Now his queen's on pre. Who's got to deal with that? And I could start thinking about playing moves like c5 here, which threatens to keep my knight and get him out of there because I've got queen checks. He has no direct threats here, so I'm just going to play c5 and let him uh, wallow in his misery here. Try king d2 here. King d2 is probably his best move. Threatens to take the knight. But then I could always play knight c2 and then queen check. I don't know, that's kind of fantasy. King d2 is his best move and then just let him spend some time uh, collecting the knight and I'll get my last pieces developed. Well, my friend, you didn't see the best move. Now you got some trouble Check. here. Check. I can do this because he doesn't have... Oh, my goodness. Checkmate. Oh. Game Ouch. over. Good game. Does he want to play again? Arg, he says. Well, he learned something, Challenge. my friend. He wants to play again. Okay. All right. I guess I better play something different as white. I'm going to play C4. Okay, and d6. Okay, so I'll just play knight c3, and we may transpose into some kind of position in the English. Okay, I'm going to play the Botvinnik formation. That's pawns on c4, d3, and e4. And the, the setup with the knights. Okay, now castle. I can safely play d4 here and have a fine game. 
uh, might just do it simply because he's wasted a little time with his king side, uh, his pawn structure. So I'll just go ahead and do it. Normally I wouldn't, but he's not opposing the center, so I'm going to do it. Okay, so now he's putting the question to my pawns. Now let's see. I can place at some. I can take and then push by on either case. Or we can just let things sit there, and develop a piece, and let him make an exchange. I like the idea of developing more than anything. Okay, he, but he could take on c4 and then be threatened to hang on to it. So, and I don't mind taking on an isolated queen pawn if I have to. So let's just take here and see how he does it, how he handles this. Because I can isolate him on d5 really easily here, I think. And give him an isolated pawn on d5. And then my knights are posed to attack it. Uh, knights on c3 attacking d5. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to give him an isolated pawn to deal with. Okay, so I get an isolated pawn too, but so does he. Alright, so now... You see the point. Okay, now, how do we want to do it? Knight c3 or knight f4? Or do we want to throw a check in first? Let's play knight f4 because that takes away... Well, it doesn't take away bishop e6, but if it, it forces it and gets me the bishop pair. And it'll give him a backward pawn on the open file. Okay, so now you can, you can get around this by counterattacking uh, d4 with knight to c6. That's a theme here. But he does this. Okay, now. I guess now's the time to go ahead and take. And now what we want to do is we want to hit hit those pawns now. See, now there's a uh, potential pin. And he might have to play... If he plays queen d6, I get bishop f4 in. If he plays queen d7, I can get bishop h3 in. If he castles, I just pick up the pawn. So, threatening the pawn with check. So I think this is okay. He needs at some point to get knight c6 in and try and generate some counterplay on, on d4. Because if I stop and hold things... Oh, he played there. Okay, well, I'm just going to check him. Or do I want to check him? How about how about if we go over there? If I go to b3, I'm attacking his... I'm attacking his... Uh, b pawn. He can guard that. I can play bishop h3. And he can guard it with the rook. And when I check... What do I want the queen? What I really need is to get my bishop on c1 developed. If I do that, once I do that, everything kind of falls into place. So, I'm just going to play queen b3. He can castle by hand here, but his pawn on e6 just stays weak. I want to try to get the bishop to e5 if I have to. See, he's still got some counterplay on uh, d4. And as a matter of fact, I've just offered it to him. But I think taking that pawn on on b7 just gives me a fine game because it's with check. And so this is a point where I can afford to play a move like uh, bishop e3 and just block the e-file if I have to. Okay, now is he threatening it? Anything? Okay, good. Okay, now I want to do it because his queen can't get to f6 anymore. So now I'm going to threaten to take on e6. So if he guards with rook e8, I have queen f3 check. I knew there was a reason why I was doing this. Because that's one reason I didn't check him on f3 earlier. His queen was controlling d6. Okay, so... Wow. I guess I just take take the material that I'm getting here. Okay, bishop check. takes check. Okay, rook takes. Now I've got a rook and bishop for the uh, and pawn for the queen. So now he can uh, take on d4. Not too worried about that. I can take on b7, and then on knight d4. What's he threat? What's he threatening? If I play b, I kind of hate to play a move like bishop e3. It's just ugly. I'll just play it to f4 with some tactical possibilities. Keeps the e file open for me to check. I may not. I may rather take on d5 with my queen if I can drive his king away. I would much rather do that than take on b7. Although b7 is not a bad place to take a pawn off. It's on the seventh rank. Attacks a bishop. 
So my next plan is to play rookie one check here. Yeah, it's a shame he's just dropping material for nothing. He's not just not finding the right plans. And and that's blitz chess. Uh, he's getting some valuable experience here. Uh, okay, now we give the rook check, and I guess d5 falls. Check. Okay, and it's going to fall unless he plays to f6. It's going to fall with check. Game over. And he gave up. Hey, thanks. I don't know. So I guess uh, fun games. I don't even know how to chat on this server. I'm a newbie. Okay, where do you chat? Down here. Thanks. Two. Okay. Command not found. Say thanks as well. Okay. Thanks for all that uh, were watching these. Hope you learned something from the openings. Thank you.